Even if you are a crazy GOT fan, you will probably never recognize these actors even if you meet them face to face. What was the most difficult thing for the Night King during the filming? What does Rory McCann have in common with his character, The Hound? What roles did Ian White have on GOT before he became the giant 1-1? Find the answers in our video. Rory McCann as Sandor Clegane Cruel Sandor Clegane is probably one of the most dangerous men in Westeros. He looks just right. Dark face with scars from the burns he got as a child when his brother shoved his head into a brazier. You are probably waiting to hear that in real life. Rory McCann is exuberant and the life of every party? Well, no. McCann is well known for living a solitary, transient lifestyle. When GOT was first filmed in Iceland, he liked how remote it was there and moved there for a year. No surprise, he doesn't have a TV. Normally when we're filming, I hide, the actor admitted. I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I'm used to living on my own on a boat on the west coast of Scotland. With the other cast, it's been like passing ships in the night. Despite the fact that McCann is not as recognizable offset as the other actors, he doesn't have much patience for fan attention. I do get recognized and I try to be accommodating, but I prefer not to be noticed, to be honest, and disappear. Even the other day, someone caught me before breakfast in a strange place. I didn't even manage to see him and the guy went, you're the hound, and I just said, F off, the actor revealed. Very much like the hound, isn't it? But the main drawback for the actor is not the fans, but the makeup. In the early seasons, the makeup artist spent no less than three hours creating the ugly scars. Seven seasons in, the makeup artists have gotten wiser, now using a shortcut that cut that time in half. Phew! According to McCann, it was mostly uncomfortable during the filming in winter in Belfast. With the latex, you sweat whether you like it or not. You're all wrapped up in some heated trailer or makeup truck, and then you go out on set and it's freezing, he says. Then the sweat underneath your latex freezes. Not the nicest feeling. Maybe that's why the actor is so grumpy? Hannah Waddingham as Septa Unella. Aside from Night King, Ramsay Bolton and Joffrey, there's nobody scarier on Game of Thrones than Septa Unella. The devoted follower of the High Sparrow and the Faith of the Seven is a woman you should not cross. Who else would have the guts to pass naked Cersei Lannister through the streets of King's Landing while crying out, shame, which was then followed by Cersei's particular cruelty towards her? The English actress, Hannah Waddingham, starkly contrasts her on-screen character. Just look at this smiley and elegant woman! Such style suits her much better than the conservative grey attire of the show. Last year, she told Vulture that she and Lena Headey had trouble keeping a straight face while filming the big shame scene. We absolutely got on like a house on fire, and at times we were told off by the director because we were just having way too much fun, she said. By the way, it's not her first time playing evil roles. It was Waddingham who portrayed the witch in Into the Woods and the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. She has been nominated for three Olivier Awards, which are the British equivalent of the Tonys. Kay Alexander as Leaf Even if you think you're a fan, you'll definitely not recognize this actress even if you meet her face to face. Kay Alexander, the Japanese actress who portrayed the leader of the Children of the Forest, wore yellow contacts, full body prosthetics, and a grayish green wick. Alexander went through a procedure that lasted between 9 and 10 hours to be transformed into Leaf. If I were to do a full body prosthetic, I would get picked up at midnight and then I'll be on set by 10 a.m. Alexander shared with Business Insider, I didn't realize it was going to result to 9 and a half hours of makeup. Kay played a monumental part in Season 6 as a major discovery was shown through Bran Stark's vision featuring her. Ian White as 1-1 If you meet Ian White in real life, you might not recognize the giant 1-1, but you'll definitely grant him some attention. He is 7 feet 11 inches tall, and before acting in GOT, he was a professional basketball player. After retiring as an athlete, he decided to do acting and stunt work as a career. To portray 1-1, he had to wear a big foam bodysuit and silicone rubber prosthetic makeup on his head. What's interesting is that White managed to play a few roles in this show. The 47-year-old Welsh actor began his Game of Thrones gig playing a White Walker in the show's first two seasons, and was one of the three actors to portray Sir Gregor Clegane, aka The Mountain, in the second season. In season three, he played an unnamed giant, then moved on to playing yet another giant, 1-1 the Wildling, in season five. He last made his appearance in the third episode of Season 8, in which the giant was destroyed by the brave Lyanna Mormont's sword. Gemma Whelan as Yara Greyjoy Unlike the actresses who portray the other queens in Westeros, the English actress who portrays Yara Greyjoy does not wear a wig on HBO's Game of Thrones. Yara was not someone to trifle with. 
Queen Yara is portrayed by the actress Gemma Whelan, who looks nothing like her GOT character, who is often dirty-haired and with a mud-smeared face. The actress is a huge fan of the show and always watches the new episodes with her husband at home. I like to watch it like a fan and be surprised, she said. So I sit on the sofa watching with my husband. I've never watched a TV show more vividly than the way I watch Game of Thrones. I have a physical reaction. Get up off the sofa, walk about, slap my arms around. It's a very physical experience in our house, Game of Thrones. Gemma Whelan is a young mother, and she has recently surprised her fans with a picture on Instagram in which she is breastfeeding her little daughter right on the set of the last season, fully in costume. By the way, her daughter is one of the few who knows how the show is going to end. She can't tell anyone, the actress says. Whelan thinks it's inappropriate to ask her how it is like to portray a strong female character. Women by default are strong, she said. Just one more reason why we love her so much. Tom Vlashika as Jakin Hikar. Jakin Hikar is literally no one or everyone in the house of black and white. He attracts and scares at the same time. His phrases sound confusing. And it was him who taught Arya how to, well, you know, we won't give away any spoilers. This might seem confusing, but Jakin still has one more commonly used face, that of German actor Tom Vlashika. What I really love about the character is that he has a big secret, Vlashika says. You can really play with the fact that you're hiding things, that you're always literally putting on a different face. I like his magic ability, although we'll find out that they're not that magical at all. He's just very skilled. By the way, two years ago in an interview, Vlashika revealed that he thinks that eventually no one will end up sitting on the Iron Throne. As the actor wore no makeup for filming, besides the different faces, he said, It's natural for me to be sitting in a restaurant and people just take photos of me from everywhere. But it's okay, I can live with it. Carrie Ingram as Shireen Baratheon GOT had plenty of shocking WTF moments, but nothing can compare to the cruelty of the Red Wedding and the death of little Shireen Baratheon. Now the actress Carrie Ingram is already 20! Oh, time flies! In a recent interview, the young actress had revealed in detail how she spent time preparing for and filming the final scene. Even at the beginning of the filming of the fifth season, the girl was warned that her character was going to be killed, but she wasn't told how. The most difficult challenge during the preparation of the portrayal of Ingram was the screaming. Within those screams, she had to embody all the despair and hopelessness of a child that was going to be killed. The actress was very worried that she had no place to rehearse the screaming because after trying such a thing, she would probably have been visited by a few police officers. I brought this up to production. I don't really know what to do. Is there any way I could get a soundproof room or something like that just so that I can prepare for it? So what they did is they took me out to an empty car park in the middle of Belfast and had a vocal coach scream with me. It was very funny to the people passing by. That was the only preparation that I did. The result of the filming of this episode was an amazing, terrifying scene and a lost voice. I had to tell all my friends I was sick because I couldn't tell them why I lost my voice, shared the actress. Lino Facchioli as Robin Aaron He was about eight or nine when he made his first appearance as Robin Aaron, a cranky and cruel boy who literally can't leave his mother's breasts. And then, all of a sudden, he appears in the final episode and we can't believe what we are seeing. He is hot, really hot. It's Robin, not Daenerys' death, that became the most discussed moment of the finale. His glow-up had the audience comparing him to Neville Longbottom from Harry Potter. According to 18-year-old Lino Facchioli, he gained more followers in a night than he had throughout his whole time being on Instagram. The experience has left him pretty baffled. Honestly, I just kind of laugh and sort of just act as humble as possible. I never know how to react with compliments. I love them, but it's always like, how do you react? The actor has also revealed in an interview that after the sixth season, he never thought his character would reappear in the last season. I always felt like I was at home there, he said. I always felt like I was with a good group of people, and these are people that I've known for a while. Gwendolyn Christie as Brienne of Tarth The appearance of the actress Gwendolyn Christie at the GOT premiere night in a marvelous airy dress outshone everyone, including Sophie Turner and Amelia Clark. Maybe Jamie Lannister and Tormund Giantsbane saw something in her which we, the viewers, couldn't see behind the ammunition? If you read the description of Brienne of Tarth in the A Song of Ice and Fire books, you know that the creators of the show face a difficult task. They had to find not just a woman in armor, she also had to be quite brawny and, yes, even ugly. That actress was Gwendolyn Christie. No one was more surprised than me that people liked my character, Christie says. I just assumed that because she wasn't a conventionally attractive woman, people wouldn't get behind her. I'm overwhelmed that they did. 
Fans were completely shocked when they finally saw what she looked like off screen. The tall and leggy Christy ended up being quite a knockout. Pretty much the exact opposite of how Brienne gets described in the books and gets depicted on the show. Vladimir Furdik as the Night King You think that if you saw the face of the Night King once, you won't be able to ever forget it? What if we tell you that the actor Vladimir Furdix appeared all over Westeros in plenty of roles over the years? He's doubled for actors or played anonymous swordsmen in 14 episodes, spanning series-defining moments in the Battle of the Bastards, the Loot Train Attack, and Cersei's destruction of the Sept of Baelor. He also played the first White Walker Jon Snow murdered at Hardhome. And that's him in the door as the shirtless first man the Children of the Forest tie up and transform into the Night King. Vladimir Furdik revealed that he spends about 6.5 hours doing makeup to transform into the Night King. By the time that's done, he's already in character. When somebody puts a costume like this and makeup, you completely change to be the character, he explained. You don't need to be thinking. Hair and makeup change you into this creature. But the most difficult part of the role? Remembering not to blink. It's not easy, but if you put in your mind on that information, don't blink, I don't blink. It's training. Which of these actors would you like to meet in real life? Tell us in the comments! Thanks for watching! Check out these other great stories from Asa and subscribe for new videos about your favorite stars!